This is R2D Tech and this time we're doing a video about a really great budget monitor from LG. So let's get into it. So this is a 24 inch monitor from LG um, with a ridiculous name. But despite that, I think it is a really brilliant option if you're on a budget. I picked this one up for about 90 pounds on Amazon, reduced from about 130 if I'm right. Um, which I think is a really good deal, especially considering that it offers a lot uh, of features that you would expect to find on much more expensive uh, options out there. So let's see what it has to offer. So firstly, in the box, you are getting firstly, obviously the monitor, then the stand, as well as the power cable, and also uh, an HDMI cable if you uh, if you need one as well, which I think is quite a nice feature to have uh, because I know that other monitors out there don't offer that extra HDMI cable. So that's nice. Setup is also really easy. Uh, putting it on the stand just requires a screwdriver and the included screws as well. Um, and also it's incredibly easy just to um, turn on as well. You just plug it into either your games console or your laptop as I'm doing and it basically just works. Design-wise, it is pretty minimal, which is what I really wanted. Uh, it's made almost entirely out of black plastic, as you would expect, but it still feels relatively sturdy, which is always a good thing. Now, the bezels around the side of the screen are relatively big. However, they are all pretty much uniform apart from the bottom, which I think frames uh, the screen quite nicely, at least. However, it would have been a little bit nicer if they were just uh, a little bit smaller, which I think uh, they should be in 2021, really. One thing I will mention is the weight. It comes in at just over three kilograms, which is a little bit heavier than I was expecting. And actually, I opted to buy um, an external arm to actually hold the display. And what I would recommend if you're gonna do the same is going for a really sturdy one because the one I got just bends a little bit um, because it just can't really take the, the full weight of it. Now, I don't think it's gonna snap, but um, I would recommend going for a different one if, as I said, you're gonna do the same. I will link the one I got in the description just for reference. So on to the most important thing, uh, the screen. Now it does have a resolution of 1080p, which I think is definitely sharp enough for a 24 inch monitor. Um, but if you are doing things like content creation, you might want to go for a 4K model. Uh, however, for my needs, 1080p is perfectly fine. Uh, image quality is also really good on, on uh, this display, which is a good thing. I think it should be fine for amateur content creation and even gaming. Uh, but then again, you might want to go for uh, a screen with a higher refresh rate. This one has a refresh rate of 75 hertz, which is just a little bit more than the standard 60 hertz, which is a little bonus. If I had one gripe with the display, it would be the brightness. Now it only reaches 250 nits, which in broad daylight is a little bit dim. Um, it would have been nice to see just a little bit brighter a display. Um, maybe 300 nits would have been sufficient, but there you go. It is also an IPS panel, which as most people will tell you is the display technology that you want instead of the TN panels, which are rubbish. Um, now this display, like most displays, also has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is pretty standard. And it also does have excellent viewing angles, like tilting it from side to side, even from almost a side on position, it was still pretty clear the image, which is a good thing. Now, like most monitors, this is going to be a matte display, uh, which I think are much better than glossy displays because it does counter the reflection or glare from sunlight, which is quite nice. However, one drawback is that matte displays pick up dust much more easily uh, than glossy displays. So you will have to have a microfiber cloth to hand uh, a lot of the time, which is a bit annoying. 
The uh, controls for the display are also really easy to use. There's one toggle at the bottom of the display. You hold it to go to like a main menu of all the options and then you can toggle it side to side or back to front to choose the option. So it's really easy to use and really intuitive. And uh, you can change things like the brightness of the display, the input, uh, the even the uh, volume if you want to, if you have speakers plugged in. So pretty good stuff. One more bonus is that it does also support AMD FreeSync. So if you have an AMD graphics card, that's just uh, a little bit of an extra bonus for you. Now turning to the back for the ports, you are getting a D-sub, a headphone jack, an HDMI port, and also that power port. You are also getting a 75 by 75 millimeter visa mount, which is good if you want to wall mount it or attach it to an external arm as I did. So those are all pretty standard uh, things that you would find on a monitor. So for the price of 90 pounds, depending on where you get it from, I think this is a great uh, budget option for a monitor. Now it doesn't have luxury features like a USB-C port or a high refresh rate or high resolution, but you wouldn't really expect that for 90 pounds. So I think overall for most people, this is going to be a great option. That's it from this video. If you liked it, please press the thumbs up button. If you loved it, please consider subscribing.